So in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a glass vase like this, a round glass vase. Now, painting on a rounded surface is just about the most difficult glass painting you can do. There's nothing we can do to make it easy for you, but we do have a few hints and tips to make it less difficult and try and get this nice, smooth finish to your work. OK, let's get on and see how we did it. Well, here's the bowl before I started working on it. As you can see, a normal glass bowl. I got it from Oasis on the Isle of Wight. Um, if you're ever over there, pop into Oasis. They've got some nice craft and um, blank stuff as well. And it wasn't very expensive. Three pounds, there you are, I'll let you know. Right, so I'm ready to do my bowl. I've chosen a design and I've decided to work mostly off the bowl to start with. That means I'm going to do my work on a sheet like this, then transfer it across. So I'm using peelable glass, peelable outliner, not glass paint, peelable outliner. Here I've just got a backing board, my design, and that all goes into the plastic sheet. Then I find a bit of blue tack, and I'm just going to put a couple of bits of blue tack on to keep it still while I'm outlining it. As I said, I'm using peelable outliner and in this instance, I'm going to use this plaid gallery glass. Many people worry if they use peelable outliner that the item they make won't be washable. It will in fact, it can be washed down, but it can't be put in a dishwasher or soaked. And when I did craft fairs, I used to put a little slip in with my work, just saying that. So hand wash, do not soak, do not machine wash. Put my outliner in. Again, don't worry too much about how much outliner you put in because any spare can go back in the bottle at the end. Normal outlining technique, start in the middle, work your way out, lift and pull. Now you will notice I don't do every single little bit of this design and the reason for that will become obvious later. Now that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, I'll show you why I'm not doing the other bits later, but it's to do with moving it. I shall leave that to dry and then do another one, or I'll do another one while it's, that one's drying. So moving on to the next stage, here I've got two designs outlined, which have already dried. Now you need to be very careful during this stage but don't worry if it does break because you'll be able to reassemble it back on the glass. What I'm going to do is peel the first of these designs off and I'm going to do it very carefully, bit by bit. The first bit is always the hardest. After that, you should to some extent be able to pull it off. Right, to get that on the glass should be quite simple. <laughs> Probably famous last words there. But I'm going to put the bowl. Uh, 
over it like that and then just roll and hopefully it will stick on there. Now it's not going to be perfect because you're putting a round shape or you're putting a, a flat design onto a round shape so it's not going to be perfect but you should be able to get it to lie roughly right. There may be the odd bit you want to cut off. I may cut off that leaf there. But apart from that, it should lie well. Now I know you think that might not be on there very solid. It is in fact fairly solid, but don't worry. It's the paint, adding the paint is then going to seal the design onto the glass. Okay, that's the first one done. And I shall move on and do the second. And then we're gonna do a bit more outlining. Okay, well now I've got the first two bits on. I'm, what I'm gonna do next is add some of the missing bits and put some design in between to pull the two bits together. My first problem is keeping it still. Um, soon discovered this, which is quite funny, but not very helpful. The answer to that seemed to be to put a bit of weight in the bottom. There. And now, hopefully, it will stay. Right, I've got my design by me so I can keep an eye, see the bits I've missed out, add those in and make up some bits in between. Won't make you watch all of this as normal. Um, so let me just get the piping bag done and I'll show you a bit of it sped up and then we'll skip to the painting. Well, in our quest to get a reasonable or good finish to this bowl, we've done the first bit. We've broken the design up as much as we can. We chose purposely a complicated design, lots of little sections rather than large areas. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to paint one small section at a time. This means it is going to take a long time to paint. There's nothing you can do about that. The more you rush, the worse it'll be. Do one small section at a time. Now, if you look, we can choose areas, move it around, choose another area, do a few little bits at a time, but very slowly, letting it go at least tacky dry in between each time. Luckily, as we're going to be using thin layers of paint or a thin layer of paint, that shouldn't take too long. So let's show you. I'm going to start at the top here. Just going to use that to wedge the bowl so it doesn't move. And I think I'm going to be able to do that bud head, that bud head, the bottom of the bud heads, and that leaf. And that will do for now. That's one lot done. We'll leave that to dry. The next thing is, one, I'm using ordinary brushes. As some of you may know, I use a solid paintbrush a lot, but no, I'm using bristle paintbrushes at this time. It's going to be a thin layer of paint. Use as little paint as you can get away with while still getting a smooth finish. That, that, that's the trick. The other thing is, yes, we're going to get a little bit of flow of paint, it's going to be heavier one side than the other. There's nothing you can do about that. 
it's going to happen. What we're trying to do is minimize it. Lastly, I'm going to warm up the glass. Now, I'm not going to make it hot. If you make it hot, it'll be bad for the paint which is going on, and it'll also be bad for any paint which is already on. You don't want it hot, you just want it warm. That'll help the paint dry quicker and therefore run less. So close your ears for a second whilst I do this. So that's just warmed up, it's, it is by no means hot. Right, and now on with the painting. A little bit of paint, remember we're not flood filling this time. We are just brushing it on. Certainly want more than that. As little as you can get away with, but still have a smooth finish to it. I think we have to pull it back a bit, so I might not be able to do as much as I hoped. Now I've got different paint brushes here, one for the red orangey colours and one for the greener colours. That's because it's actually quite difficult to change, to clean your brushes between each go. The other thing is, you'll notice I am painting areas next to each other. This is because we're not flood filling, so hopefully we're not going to mix the paints as much as we normally would or risk doing if we were doing flood filling. And that's it, that is all I'm going to do for this session. So I'm now going to give that at least an hour to dry before I'm going to move it around just a tad to do the next. So I'm going to do this over the next few days and we'll pop back every now and then and see how it's going. Well, as you can see, I hope it's coming on well. I've used a nice mixture of greens for the leaves. Stop them getting boring. Um, I've got four greens here, apple green, chartreuse, uh, emerald green and green gold. I'll put the full list of colors up on the side so you can see which colors I've used. Obviously, you don't have to use the same colors if you don't want to. I've done it very slowly, bit by bit and nearly got to the end now. Let's just do a leaf up here. And then basically I'll have the last flower to go. I'm 
not too much paint. A little overspill there. Just get that off. There we go. And I think we'll put some shatterers, or whatever it's called, on there as well. There we go. Leave that to dry just for an hour. Move on, do the next bit. I've got this final flower to do, a few leaves over here a couple of leaves and bud there and then I should be finished. Well here it is, the vase is finally finished, that's actually taken me over two weeks to do. But I hope you like the finished item, I certainly do. Just to recap, four tips to help you paint on a curved surface. One, try and choose a design which is broken up into very small areas. You can see on here, the petal is about the largest area. And even that I broke up into individual petals, painting to these little outlined blobs. Two, when you're painting, ensure your glass is warm. Certainly make sure it's not cold. You don't want it hot, hot, but you do want it as warm as you can get away with. Um, and this helps the paint to dry quicker, or more quickly, perhaps I should say. When you're painting, use as little paint as you can get away with. This means not flood filling it as we normally do. Use enough paint to cover the, the surface, but no more. Lastly, do one small section at a time. Wait for it to dry, move the glass around. One small section at a time. Move it around, up and down and round. This is why it's taken me two weeks to do. Obviously, not a lot of that involved painting. The vast, vast majority of the time, I was waiting for it to dry. But it's worth taking your time over it. Do other stuff, do other projects, and come back and paint this every now and then. And leaving it to dry in between. Okay, I hope you enjoy the project. project. The design will be available for download off our website. As normal, if you're not a member of our YouTube channel, please do sign or click subscribe. If you're not on our mailing list, even more important, pop to our site and sign up for the mailing list. We'll let you know when there's new designs and new projects, etc. Okay, happy crafting.